Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com, your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing the stainless steel Audemars Piguet Millinery Chronograph. 41 millimeters from nine o'clock to three o'clock, not including the crown. It's 11.1 millimeters thick. It's 43.6 millimeters from lug to lug, delightfully short across the wrist. And it has a 20 millimeter spacing between the lugs. The original Millinery, launched in 1995, it was designed by Emmanuel Get, who also designed the Royal Oak Offshore. It seems like every generation has its oval shaped watch. And for the 90s generation, it was this. Although later reborn as a larger timepiece, the original millinery is beautifully easy to wear on any wrist size. And because it's long lengthwise down the wrist, it manages to achieve impressive stance despite being incredibly narrow across the arm. So the watch can be worn on a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference. It's definitely a unisex option. And since it was intended as a sporty dress watch, but still a dress watch, it's flat enough with a sloped case flank to fit underneath the cuff. So taking a look at the strap, you can see it is a brand new Audemars Piguet factory strap, large rectangular scale alligator leather, gloss black on the top. We have here an edge that is uh, folded. It looks sheer, but it's a folded edge with a monotone stitch in matching black. You can see there's calfskin on the underside. Condition is outstanding. It has an Audemars Piguet logo style steel single folding deployant clasp. And you can see this has a unique exterior. You don't find this exterior, for example, on the Royal Oaks of the period. This watch is a E-series watch. So you can see right here, E-44000. So that signifies late 1990s because up until very recently, Audemars Piguet serial numbers were sequential. You can see the original millinery logo. So if you ever wonder how is it spelled, two L's, one N. It's a mistake a lot of people make. The case is beautifully made, handsome, charming. It's got a little bit of a vintage vibe to it. The lugs are all of high polish. They're very narrow when viewed end on. They have a sharp break with the case flank, which is intriguing because they're finished differently. The lugs are polished. The case flank is satinated and the contrast is beautiful. The bezel is minimalist. It's got a vertical lip and then it's, it has a, I would describe it as domed more than conical, although it is a very shallow domed profile. We have a cabochon capped that is sapphire capped crown, and you can see that this is a modular chronograph with a chronograph module on top of a JLC base movement. And you know because the center lines of the chronograph pushers are higher than the center line of the crown. Now this is a sporty take on the millinery, all in steel with a black dial, and we have plenty of loom. Broadsword style hands, Arabic numerals, indices, easy to read. We also have a multi-register dial. As you can see outboard, there is a telemeter. That is used to gauge distance. Inboard, we have a snail style tachymeter. That is used to gauge speed. So this watch has both telemeter and tachymeter. Now if you look carefully, you can see it best from this angle. Each one of the sub-registers, constant seconds, chrono minutes, and chrono hours, is elongated and ovoid like the case. It's also a little bit of a depression or a countersink into the dial. Everything is white on black for great contrast. We have white lacquered hands that really pop. And then you can see we have a magnifier which is internal to the watch. It's actually on the dial side. It's not under the crystal. It's not atop the crystal. Now, you will note that this is no Frédéric Piguet movement. Although AP often used the Frédéric Piguet 1185, especially in the Royal Oak and Jules Audemars chronographs, this watch was made in an era when AP owned 40% of Jeger Le Coult, and most Audemars Piguet base automatics were JLC based. Because this is a JLC 889 base, you have that hacking seconds function. There's a lot to love about the 889. It's always, from this era, adjusted in five or six positions, which is superb. Automatic winding, ultra thin. It is a 40 hour power reserve, a four hertz beat rate. The base movement has 36 joules. It has both hacking seconds and a quick set date. So if you engage the intermediate position to quick set the date.
you have a wonderfully serify font on this dial. If you look carefully, you can see even the five has serifs in places where, quite frankly, I never imagined you could put them on a numeral. But the font is lovely, evocative, and it's evocative of its era, the 1990s. In the 80s and the 90s, serif fonts were all the rage. Look at that three. Now, the other thing I like about this system is that it is wonderfully crisp. Once you engage the quick set, it's like firing a rifle bolt. You just want to play with it. Other things to love. It's a Dubois de Praz chronograph module, and uh, DD makes some great ones because it's a vertical clutch module. Sorry about that, knocking the camera there. There's no play in the system, so when you start it, there's no jump or stagger. It has a modern high beat rate of 8 beats per second, or 28,800 vibrations per hour, and it is a robust high horology combination. The DD module is extremely reliable. The JLC base movement is elite, packaged in a rare combination of oval case and Audemars Piguet imprimatur. 30 meters water resistance, so it is a dress watch, make no mistake. Reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of this unusually sporty millinery chronograph.